nothing else matters until you return unto him. And we have came this far by faith. Amen. We've come this far by faith. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry. I am a weeping prophet. It's okay. I am a weeping speaker of God. Because you know what? His word is real in my life. And every time I hear it, it causes my spirit man to weep. She weeps because I know the things of God. I know he's real. And I know his word will cause things to happen in my life for the good. Do you understand what I'm saying to you today? We are all here on purpose. And he's bringing the word today. He wants us to remember. He said it is a call to come back to him. So that we can live this blessed life. So that our next generation of our children and children's children will have the blessed life. I don't know about you, but that thing that was on my family, that curse stopped with me. Because I turned that thing around. I came up out the club, I quit the drinking, I quit doing the things that was not pleasing to God. It was me who made the choice, not my children, not my children's children. They will live the blessing. They will have the blessing that God talked about for Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. So here I am today to share with you, God is, has a call to return unto him. And before I speak the word of God, let us go before the Father in prayer. I know I get excited because I get excited about the word. I get excited. Father God, I come before you now. Humbly I come. Thankfully I come, oh God. Everything that I am is yours. Everything that I've done, oh God, I want to do it pleasing unto you, Father. So, God, I thank you for the anointing that rests upon me, God. I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost that lives within me, O oh God. I thank you for the blessing, O oh God. I ask, O oh God, that you would allow your Holy Spirit to come now and take place in this place. Move up and down the aisles in this place. Touch the hearts and the minds of your people. Open their ears that they may hear you, O oh God. That it is you that is speaking through me, God. I thank you, Father, for all that you have done. I thank you for all that you've brought me through. And I thank you in advance for where you're taking me to in 2018. I thank you, God, for the blessing, for the anointing in this place. I thank you for our angel of the house. I thank you for his wife, oh God, who has been a blessing unto me. I thank you for each minister, Father God, and I thank you for my loving husband, Father. I thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Amen. Ooh, glory. So we've come this far, just this far, by faith. Sister, if you will, please, I just wanted to remind them. Glory. Oh, yes, oh, yes. The Lord, yes. Trust in His holy word. How many of y'all been trusting? I've been trusting a long time. He never failed me yet. Come on, y'all. That's why I say, oh. Cause I've come this far by faith. Yes. Come yes. this far by faith. The road was really hard, but I made it. Glory. I don't know about you, but I'm happy that I made it. Yes. I could have been somewhere in the grave. Trusting Woo! in Strung out on drugs. I could have been selling my body on the street, oh God. Help me, Jesus. He but God didn't fail me. 
told us yes. So that I can sing this song this morning. That's why I say, oh, we can't turn around. Because I've come, come this far by faith. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. He said, just the other day I heard a man say <laughs> that he didn't believe in God's word. Hmm. Hmm. I'm glad I'm not that guy today. Father God, I thank you. If I was to title my message today, it would be a call to return. A call to return. I know you've heard it. I know you've heard him beckoning, pulling at your heartstrings. Child, it's time to come back. I'll be coming from Deuteronomy 30, verses 2 and 3. Amen. <laughs> Woo, Jesus. We started this journey, you guys. Co-Pastor Murdoch was saying how to hear from God, how to know and how to obey the voice of God. Then we heard sister say, wise men seek Jesus. Come on now, y'all. Do y'all not see the message that God is? He's calling you to return. Joy in the midst of your trials. He said it ain't going to be easy, but I want you to come back. And then pastor on last week said, this year, my year for God's favor a call to return. A call to return. He's, he's telling us it's time. It's time. It's time to quit playing. It's time to quit playing. Amen. I am reading from, let's see, New Translation. I'm going to start at one and I'm going to read to three. In the future, when you experience all these blessings and curses, I have listed you, for you, and when you are living among the nations to which the Lord your God has exiled you, take to heart all these instructions. So he wants us to remember. If at that time you and your children return to the Lord your God, Here's the stipulation and the condition. And if you obey with all of your heart and all of your soul, all the commands I have given you today, three says, and then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes. He will have mercy on you, on you and gather you back from all nations where he had scattered you. Amen. I'm going to stop right there. Here we have Moses. He has brought the people, the ones that survive through the wilderness, and they're at the river of Jordan, about to ready to cross over into the promised land. Y'all, we didn't cross over to 2018. He didn't allow that already. Amen. I can't say that everybody did because I've seen a lot of people that died right at the before the, the midnight hour on 2017 so you're blessed already because you made it over but now we, here's an encouraging word god has for us through moses he said <laughs> this new generation set at the east of the jordan river in the land of moab before they could cross over the river into the promised land, Moses delivered an inspirational speech indicating that how they were to live. Just because he allowed you to get there, come on somebody, does not mean that you get a chance to live any kind of way. He wants you to live the moral law that he has written on the tablets of each one of our hearts. So today, my purpose is to remind them, remind you of what God has done, and to encourage you to rededicate your life. Did you hear what I said? He's calling us to rededicate our lives to him. He's telling us that he wants us to come 
back into the kingdom. Have you found yourself out of the kingdom lately? Doing what you want to do, saying what you want to say. Today he's speaking to you. He's speaking to you and to me. Because I don't have it all together. Sometimes I miss it. But I can get before God and ask for forgiveness. And get back in line. Amen? So he's telling us, he's reminding us to get back into the kingdom of God. He reminds the people of God's covenant. And then he tells them, your obedience will bring the blessing. But your rebellion will bring the curse. Do you understand what I'm saying? He's beckoning you to come because so, he wants us all to be blessed. He wants us all to have more than enough. He wants all of us to have peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, peace in our marriage, peace in our children. But how can we if we are not living the way he wants us to live? Amen? So how can we return to God? Minister D, help us to get back into the things of God. First of all, he tells us to stop and think, recognize, think about it. Think about what you're doing. Think about how you're talking to your spouse. Think about how you're speaking to your children. Think about what you're doing. Are you still drinking and smoking? Are you still partying? Think about it. Stop and think. Stop and think. 2018, you're saying that it is your year of favor. How can, I, how can I help you get into the presence of God? How can I help you live out the will of God? If you don't hear, stop and hear. He says to repent of your sin. Minister D, how do I repent? How do I repent? How do I stop? First of all, recognize what I'm doing, what I'm saying, how I'm living. Now I'm asking the question, how do I repent? God said, stop what you're doing. Turn yourself around. Make better choices. First, confess your sin. How many of us have took time to confess? It's a daily thing with me. Before I lay down at night, I have to ask God to forgive me wherever I may have missed a mark. I'm not sure what I might have said or done, but I'm, I'm going to ask him, Father, Father, if I've missed it somewhere, please forgive me. I'm confessing. Was I not loving and kind to my husband? Did I say something that should not have been said? If I did, Father, please help me. I confess. I am bound and determined to walk this thing out on purpose. On purpose. That means it's in my mind every morning that I get up, I'm going to purposely talk to my father. I'm going to ask him for direction just for today. Purposeful living. Come on now. I want to make sure that you guys understand God is calling us to return, but he's also telling you the conditions and the things that we need to do. So we need to repent, turn around, do a 360, 80 degrees, stop what you're doing, stop right now, and ask God to help you to live this thing out. You might have to close some doors, get rid of some friends. Hello? You might have to quit going places that you know that's not pleasing have you ever seen a barrel of monkeys? One is trying to get out and the other one's holding them down. Well, that's what your friends do when you're trying to live right. They're trying to keep misery loves company. I never could understand that, Pastor. Well, my mother used to always say that. Baby, quit going there. Misery loves company. But now I get it. Now I get it. So every morning, I'm on my knees. Actually, I go into my new bathroom that I had redone, and I sit on my new throne that God blessed me with. <laughs> Amen. It's so beautiful, and it's so peaceful. My husband said, whatever you want to do, honey, whatever colors you want to put in it, whatever you want. And I made it a peaceful place so that I could go and I can sit with my father. 
And I said, and I talked to him, I bet my husband like, what is she doing in there for an hour and a half early in the morning? It's because it's silent time with God. And I'm asking him to order my steps in his word. So we must repent of our sins and turn to God. The good thing about God is that he don't hold it against you. He's a forgiving God. He's a loving and kind God. You know how we do when our kids mess up. We take them right back the next morning. We still love on them, don't we? Same thing as God. So repent and ask God for forgiveness and return to him. It says we must pray and ask God for forgiveness. Remember the things that he's brought us through, which we know we shouldn't have made it, right? There's no way. I remember a time when I was uh, in my sin, partying, drinking, and driving. No, that was me. And one day I realized, how did I make it home? I, I, I could not, I didn't have a regulation of how I made it home. That should tell me that I blacked out, but yet I made it home. And I made it all the way into the house. Into the house. God, you, you cannot tell me that there is not a God, a merciful God. He kept me until I got it together. That's why I say he's a keeping God and he's patient. It says here, I just want to help you remember some things. God says <laughs> he wants us to remember and turn back. Remember how he cared for you when you had nothing. Remember how he kept you when you were going to places that you had no business. Remember how he healed you when the doctor said there is no cure. Just remember. That's what I love about the book of Deuteronomy. It will make you remember the things of God. Remember how he made a way when you had no way. You didn't know. You know, you come to the last week of the month and what the account looked like. I had lint in my pocket, lint in my purse, lint everywhere, but there was no money. The lights were still on. The car still had gas. It's God. Amen? It was him. Remember just to turn back. That's all I want you to do is remember. Jeremiah 25 and 5 says, They said, Turn ye again now, everyone, from this evil thing and from the evil of your doings. He's asking us just to stop and turn around. I need you to get that. Stop and turn around. It is our sins that keep us from the will of God, the blessing of God. It is our sin. It's not God's sin. It's our sin. So he's telling us now, okay, it's time to come back. And then he says, when you do come back, do it wholeheartedly. Don't give me no lip service. Oh, I love you, God. I'm going to the church in the morning. But then you leave this place and you're going right back to what you used to do. He says, no, full wholeheartedly love me. Teach your children how to love me, how to honor me, how to live for me. What good does it do you if you don't tell your children? You want the blessing, right? Then he says to teach your children also. My God. If at any time you and your children, if at any time you and your children, so he didn't leave anything out, you and your children, do you want your children to stay here and suffer while you're gone? They've suffered enough while you lived here. They watched what you did. And now they're taking on the things that you did. Why not have it flip-flop and they see you praying? They see you living right. They see you praising God. They see you praying in the morning. They see you praying in the evening. They see you change your ways and change your friends. How about that? How about you leave them with that? And at that time, you and your children return to God. And if you obey wholeheartedly with everything that inside of you, see, God don't want one of those half-warm Christians. 
You know how people get excited when they say they got the Holy Ghost? You know, the, one, not, not the, the ones that's not real. You know those? The ones that jump up and down and run around the church? Those. That's lip service before God. That's pretend. But God is telling us to come to him wholeheartedly. If you really want what I have for you, live for me wholeheartedly. So I said, okay, God, no longer will I go out Friday night, Saturday night, and get up and go praise you on Sunday morning. Oh, it's just me. Y'all all these good Christians. Y'all ain't never done that. It's just me. Let's be honest today. I was not serving him wholeheartedly like he had asked. But I made a choice about six, mm, it's been 16 years to put it all down because I did not want the curse to be on my children and my grandchildren and those to come. Pastor taught me how to tithe in this church. That used to get me. I ain't making that preacher rich. He already rich. He can't have my money driving Cadillacs and stuff. Y'all know that's a trick of the enemy. Because once you get a revelation that God asked us to give a tenth, you'll be in the blessed place. But can I tell you today that I don't check the account? That I don't worry about the money? That I don't worry about the money? That the children can call and say, Mama, we a little short, can you give us the money? Here, here. yes, by all means, but pay me back. <laughs> Pastor taught me don't lend money if you don't get nothing for it. Hold on to something. I learned that lesson here too, praise Jesus. Don't give them nothing, unless they give you the, the DVD player to hold on to. I never heard that before in my life, but I heard it here, and it worked. They bring the money back, and they get their stuff back. <laughs> Praise God. I had one of those children, always in my pocket, never giving me my money back. I couldn't understand why I was always in the red. But then I learned. Thank you, Pastor. I learned. And it's because I made a choice to do it God's way. Amen? To do it God's way. So now my children and my children, children's children's children will know God. Because, baby, I talk to my grandbabies about God. The oldest one got a Bible for his birthday. <laughs> he was like, this it, name? Yes, baby, this will keep you rich. Start in the book of Proverbs and get, learn some life lessons. Mosey on over there to Psalms and hear what Brother David had to say. My grandson was like, okay. But pastor, if I had not have done that, then he would not have known God for himself. So now he, everything that I post, my grandson goes and grabs his Bible and pulls that up for himself and he reads it for himself. But that's what we're supposed to do. That's what the word says, teach our children. So my grandson knows that when he takes a wife and has children, it's to teach his children. Come on, somebody. I can teach him how to drink and dance all day long, couldn't I? But that's not the life I'm living today. Thank you, Lord. And then in three it says, then the Lord God will restore your fortunes. He will have mercy on you and gather you back from all nations where he scattered you. Am I the only one that got scattered? I lost everything. I could never hold on to anything. The man that I thought was mine wasn't really mine. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Because <laughs> he was going after his own thing. Amen? But God said, I will restore all of those things that you didn't even know that you needed. I shall give to you. So once you make up your mind, everything that you had asked God for that's in his good and perfect will for you, he will give unto you. But he's requiring something of you. Turn around. Come back. 
Today, make it your day. Choose him first. Choose him first. It's not that hard. I promise you. In the word it says in Romans, I believe it's 10, Pastor Gunn, and, and how the people was moaning that it's too hard. I can't do it. Where do I go find it? It's right in your lips. It's right in your heart. He wrote it on your heart. So you know to do right from wrong. You know that going out there getting drunk and you can't hardly see the next morning and your head hurting too bad and your kids got to fix your breakfast because you can't get up. You, you know that's wrong, right? You know that's wrong. Or, or being with somebody else's husband, I'm just going to use that. You the weekend girl. I told God one day, I want my own. I don't want leftovers. I want my own. Then he said, you're going to have to do something for me. Come back. Give me your life. Let me show you what I can do with your life. Let me show you how I can bless you. Let me show you how I can use you in the kingdom to speak to others. I said, me? I'm afraid to talk to people. Y'all don't believe that? I'm afraid to get in front of people and talk. I really was afraid. I didn't have that spirit of boldness that I can stand before you today and do. That's God. That's God. And as I look back over my life, Look at all the people that he's allowed me to touch. Going back to my old school, and I didn't know, Pastor, I was chosen to have a teenage pregnancy. But when the girls saw me, I went back to that school where I graduated from, and the young people were able to see me that even through that, God is able. And he can use my mistake to be a blessing to you. It was necessary. But if I hadn't chose to go back, then my life would have been a void. I would have just been a mess all of my life. And then my children would be a mess. And my grandchildren would be a mess. So today I'm asking you to return wholeheartedly, not halfway. Put it down. Put it down. Everything that is keeping you from the fullness of God the fullness of the blessing, the fullness of the favor, I'm asking you today to put it down. Get back in line. Get back in line. Get back in line. So, here, I'm going to just say this, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this. When we are ready, when we are fully ready to return, God stands there like this. He stands waiting. No condemnation. He's just waiting. But brothers and sisters, don't wait till it's too late. Please don't wait till it's too late. This is a brand new year. We're only into the 13th day, 14th day of a brand new year. So let's start fresh with the blessing, with the favor. Let's start fresh today. Put those things aside that you know that God is asking you to lay down. Change the way you talk. If you're not doing a God talk, then don't talk. If you're not being the blessing, then don't talk. Because our tongues can be sharp. He stands ready to receive us. God's mercy is unbelievable. You say, sister, I've gone too far. No, you haven't. You know why I can say no, you haven't? Because you're here. That means God has given you another opportunity another chance to return. His love is so great, it, it, we can't even understand it. We can't even imagine. Just like the prodigal son. We all know the story of the prodigal son. Squandered away everything that he had, everything that he, he was just so demanding to have all his stuff right now. And guess what happened? He found himself among the 
the hogs. But guess what? He remembered. Remembered. Oh my God, in my father's house, even the servants eat good. He remembered. So today, that is what God is asking you to do, is remember. Remember the promises that I gave. Remember the blessing that goes with the promises. Or you can take on the curse. It's your choice. I love God. He gives us choices. But even when we walk away and run our lives, he takes us back. <laughs> he takes us back. He never closes the door. Or where can I find him? Right where you left him. Right where you left him. Turn her back around. Remember what he's done. Remember what he said. Remember you still have an opportunity to change your life, not just your life, but your children's life. Even if those who do not have children, I'm, I guarantee that you're connected as an aunt, as an uncle, or somebody, as a cousin, that means you too. They're watching you too. Amen? So today I'm asking that you not wait too long. Today is your day that you can return to God. Let us all stand to our feet. If you find yourself separated from God, listen. Listen with your whole heart to me. If you find yourself separated from God, let me tell you, you are in a terrible place. You are in a terrible place, and things are going to be hard for you. If you do not rededicate your life, Jesus is calling us to repentance this morning. Lord, I repent of my sin. If that is you, don't look at your neighbor. They don't care. They're trying to get their own self together. If that is you this morning, you're saying, Minister D, God is speaking to me. Come to the altar. I'm going to say it again. If God is pulling at your heartstrings, He wants you to have another chance at this thing. And He wants us to get it right. January the 14th, 2018, I rededicate my life. That's what I want to hear you say. God is calling you out of your wilderness and into the promised land. We shall all go together. Thank you, Father, for these people that have come that are making the choice to hear you today that they want to rededicate themselves to you, Father. Yes, let the children come. Yes. Please, don't miss your opportunity. The Holy Spirit is moving in this place. And he is calling us huh, back to God, into the kingdom. Father God, I don't want to live the old life. That's what you're telling. You're serving notice on the devil this morning. I don't want to live that life anymore. I want the blessed life and not the cursed life. So here am I, God. Here am I. Here am I, God. I am sorry, Father, for the things that I have done that was not pleasing in thy sight. Tell him he's listening. Open up your mouth and confess, God, I'm sorry for the way I treated that person on yesterday. I'm sorry for what I said to my spouse, oh God. I'm sorry for the words I used toward my children. I'm sorry, God. Order my steps, Father, in your word. 
here am I. Here am I. Holy Spirit of the living God, you are welcome in this place. Move amongst the people of God. Touch their hearts. Speak to their minds. The change must come. You're talking about the blessed life now. You don't even have to remember on what you did on yesterday. Only today counts. Father, I pray for these, your people. They are calling out to you today, Father. They're needing your help. We love you, Father. We need you, God. Help us. Empower us with your mighty hand to live in a way that is pleasing in thy sight. Speak to our hearts and minds each and every day. Tell us, no, not that way. Go this way. Don't talk to that person. Hang up the phone. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word that gives us life, that causes us to remember the things that you have done for us. 